two-minute opening. Sorry. Uh, a two-minute opening. After that, we have three questions prepared. We will um, let each answer that in a two-minute window. After all have answered the three questions, uh, each candidate will be granted a one-minute closing statement. Um, the order of the evening will start with the first question, uh, Mr. Bailey. The second question, Mr. Williams will take first. And the third question, Mr. Stafford will take first. And we will continue to go down this way so that that way not Mr. Bailey isn't answering every question first. Uh, also, I would like you all to know that Mr. Bailey and Tiffany Henderson are running for the two-year seat, which is George Bestel's uh, seat. They will be listed on the ballot in a group. The other candidates are running for the four-year positions, and they will that will be made clear on the ballot. So just so you know, Mr. Bailey and Mrs. Henderson are running together. The other candidates are running for the four-year seats. Can I say one thing about that, that one here? Absolutely. There's been some confusion in the early voting about the ballot. This is the first time that this has ever occurred in Mount Pleasant that voted in the state and federal election. I know of one person for sure who did not, didn't get the Mount Pleasant thing put in there and they completed their ballot. If you don't see the Mount Pleasant election on it, ask the poll worker. He'll get it taken care of for you. But once you put it in that, that's it. Okay, thank you. We have microphones on the tables. If you would use them, please, when um, when speaking. Uh, Mr. Hall. <laughs> also, uh, Miss Denise Moore is up here. She has some cards. She will hold the green card up as soon as you start speaking. When you have 30 seconds remaining, she will hold that yellow card up. It says 30 seconds. When your time is up, you get to, you get the uh, red stop card. So. All right, any questions or anything else before we start the evening? All right, so we'll start with the two-minute introductory, introductory statements. Uh, Mr. Bailey, the floor is yours. Is this microphone on? Yes. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming out here tonight and spending your time away from family and so forth to listen to these questions and meet the candidates. I appreciate very much you doing that. I came to Mount Pleasant 50 years ago from Columbia as a young pharmacist with a pregnant wife and who did not want to deliver a baby in okay. Tennessee. There were no jobs in Columbia, and so I came to Mount Pleasant with a job with Mr. Lim Wagster, stayed with him for 12 years. After that, I went across the street to a known pharmacy in for 29 years. I mean, excuse me, a total of 29 years of service Mount Pleasant before we sold the right aid. The right aid. I um, got interested in government in Mount Pleasant when I was 27 years old. I got elected to Mount Pleasant Commission and served as mayor, uh, served as vice mayor and mayor for a total of seven years. And my main reason for running was Mount Pleasant was kind of like it is today. It was starting to decay and the older merchants did not want to fix their buildings up. And I understand that now as I've gotten older why they didn't, but uh, a younger blood was needed to bring, kind of bring some change into Mount Pleasant. I've always been interested in politics since that original thing. I'm not a party person, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I'm a true independent. I believe in term limits and I've always never served over 12 years of any capacity. It's an honor to have been asked to not replace Mr. Vice Mayor George Vestal, but to try to fill in his gap for the, for the last four months. It's been a very a pleasure to serve with the people. We've had a great four months together. I think we've accomplished several things. There's been no animosity toward anybody. I'm looking forward to being elected, hopefully, and serving a two-year term and try to bring Mount Pleasant back to, to a better standstill in, in the community and really do something really good for the people of Mount Pleasant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Blankenship. that there hadn't been any animosity on it. Uh, Jim's goal, he told uh, Tommy Wolver that uh, his goal was to get me to be quiet. And Mr. Wolver said, I've been trying for 20 years 
to do that. I taught at Mount Pleasant for 20 years before I retired uh, four years ago. I came to, uh, Mount, to Murray County in 1988 from South Louisiana as a teacher here with uh, my first husband with Saturn, not as a Saturn worker, but as a, he was an electrician. I'm delighted to be here tonight. Um, I didn't have to make any plans on my calendar. It's my birthday today, so I'm celebrating my birthday uh, tonight with you. But, uh, and I look, and I'm pleased to see that some gentlemen decided not to wear a coat and tie tonight. You know, ladies have to look in their closet and see what we're going to wear for an occasion. And when I consulted the ladies up at City Hall, they said, uh, definitely a pantsuit. And I went, oh, I don't have a pantsuit. So, uh, you know, I opted not to do that. But, you know, I looked in my wardrobe. And that was funny to see, and that sort of reflected who I am and what I've done. I do have a wardrobe that reflects who I am and, have, and what I do. I have a work wardrobe that I wore as a volunteer and as a teacher, and that was the one that I wore to in the classroom and to committee meetings and to planning meetings that says, let's get something done. It's easy to work in, it feels comfortable, and uh, it's okay if it gets something on it, it's not dress clothes. I have clothes like I wear this evening that I don't want to get messy and then wear that and I do that and have that here and um, do those. And then I have the clothes that you see me in when I'm at the barbecue festival and I'm doing uh, the projects with the little libraries and things like that. I did have the pleasure of being a commissioner already. I got into this as Jim got it, is here at, uh, with fulfilling my husband's last term, two years of his thing. I have worked on the things that he did, and that's what I want to do. So I hope that you see me in that position and continue in that. Thank you. Thank you. Is this working okay? Yes. yes. All right, my name is Dale Stafford, and I originally was born and grew up in California. I came to Tennessee in 1970 when I got out of the service. I lived in Giles County till 1989. And then I moved into Mount Pleasant City Limits. I started work out here at Mobile Chemical on Arrow Mines Road. The reason I've been familiar with uh, Mount Pleasant so long, have a lot of friends here that I work with or just met coming through Mount Pleasant all the time. And um, as far as why I'm running, I've never run for anything in my life, a public office of any kind. I've held office in the military, but that's a whole different ball game. So. But anyway, I think we need some new faces in the commission. And I think with new faces, if we can get along better. And one commissioner cannot do anything by himself or her. But if everybody will get along and work together, we can get some of these fi things fixed and get done and move forward because we're going to start growing. UST Ceramics is the, just the start. And we're going to have to have new homes and the businesses, the, the small businesses that will follow big plants like that. And we've got to plan ahead and not get caught and get behind on it. So I'm ready to answer questions now. I'll pass it on to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I guess I have it now. There you go. My name is Baitlin Westbrook, uh, Bear Brook, and I get a week in need and don't talk about it. First time I've done something like this. Uh, I've lived here for 12 years with my wife, Lainey, and um, I've had for the past several years people want me to run, they want common sense, and me, and as I said, I dare you to use the common sense in my name in the same sentence. A little background, because a lot of you don't know me, I'm retired military. I served eight years in Korea, a year in Thailand. I did law enforcement work as well as combat work for the Air Force. Retired in 88, I had successive uh, executive or management uh, positions. I was at Elm Springs for three years. I took the operating budget from 750 to 1.5 in three years. Why Mount Pleasant? I think we're on the verge of breaking out, and I want to be a part of that. I bring uh, three degrees, an AA in Administration and Justice, a bachelor's and master's in management, a heavy emphasis in accounting and finance. 
in grad school where we're given Harvard Business Review 10 page, 10 page lesson plans. Got an A on all of them. Cost me a lot for the instructor though. Um, first thing I did when I filed my uh, petition, I went with the city manager and I went to meet with every department head. And the first thing I said, let's get in the car, vehicle, truck, whatever, let's go visit all of your department heads. We went out, I visited every one of them, fire department, police department, as well as the power system. We have some good people. I am ready to put my managerial, my executive director skills to work and get us going. We got to get moving. And uh, what I've seen talking to the department heads and the people that work there, we got the team to do it. And I want to be a part of it if you allow me. Any questions, contact me. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bill White, and um, I, like Mr. Bailey, would like to thank all of y'all for taking the time to come here this afternoon because I know there's a lot of other things that people might rather be doing with children or whatever it may be. Uh, our family has called this home since uh, before 1960. Uh, we've had the pleasure of owning a number of businesses here from hardware to furniture to another a number of others. And, uh, currently, we just made another investment in the community of buying a home to renovate to put back on the market, which we have done for a great number of years. Um, I'm currently the Southern Region Commercial Officer for First Farmers and Merchants Bank, which entails five of our southern counties, which Murray County is, uh, and I keep an office here in Mount Pleasant as well. Uh, in 2010, I went back and got my graduate degree from LSU in banking, and that was a great experience as well. Currently, I am the chairman of the Mount Pleasant Industrial Development Board. I serve on the Murray County Property Development Committee, which has been a big driver in our new facility that's gonna be in Cherry Glen without the cooperation between the Mount Pleasant IDB, the Murray County IDB, and a number of other things that we were able to accomplish. And a lot of help from a lot of folks locally, we were able to accomplish the new building. Um, I'm a former board member of the Boys and Girls Club of Murray County, uh, as well as a graduate of Leadership Murray, and I think if you have not done that program, you should surely explore it. Um, I'm here for one simple reason. I think with my background, I can give us a very financially stable way to look at business within this community and build on that reputation, and let's try somehow to, to make our reputation much better than what we see in the paper today. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ken Wake. Ken Wake, you here? Up, I may not be on. All the way up. Ken Williams. There you go. There you go. My name is Ken Williams. I've lived in Mount Pleasant for the last 11 years. I've come to truly love this town and care about it tremendously. Uh, I don't have what these gentlemen have, but I do have a sense of love for the city. And and I believe we're at a crossroads. We can stay in the past or we can go to the future. And the way to go to the future, we've got to stop with the negativism that we've had in the past. You know, I would love to see good things reported in the paper for my pleasure. And the way we do that, we start on our infrastructure, our parks and recreation, things that are very important to the city. For any city to go forward, if they're not going forward, they're going backwards. If we're going backwards, you're going to die. And I think we're in a opportunity in our city that a lot of small towns in Tennessee would love to be in. I mean, we've got so much to offer businesses, including an airport, and it's totally underutilized. You know, the best thing we've got is our people who work for the city. They're the best, but even better than them is the citizens in Mount Pleasant. And you know, I've, I've never run for anything. My background is I'm too retired Air Force and also I spent many years working out. I've not got a great body, but I've got a good mind. <laughs> but if you allow me this opportunity, I would appreciate it and I'll do the best job I can for you. The one thing you won't get from me is double talk. I'll tell you what I mean 
and do what I say. And I think we've been lacking in that for a long time. I think we've had people tell us one thing and do another. But you won't get that with me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we will uh, move on to the three questions. Um, answering the first question is Mr. Bailey. I will read that nice and slow. I just spilled my water on the question, so bear with me if it's smeared. Um, the first question, what ideas do you have to improve Mount Pleasant's newly formed Parks and Recreation Department that would have the biggest impact on improving the quality of life for our local community? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the previous administration for their foresight in hiring Mr. Thomas Kinney, who is the first director of Mount Pleasant Recreation. Uh, I think that was a wonderful step to do that, and I think it's a step in the right direction. And also, the Recreation Committee is a step in the right direction that they formed. So, that, we've got something to really work with now with Mr. Kinney being on the job. And as he goes through and does an evaluation, which I certainly hope he will do of all our existing recreation. We'll know where we are and then we'll begin to plan for what we want to do. I see recreation broken down primarily into three main areas, our youth, our adults, and our seniors. And we can use South Central Tennessee Development District to take care of a lot of senior activities and we cannot forget these people, folks. A lot of them are very lonely and need something to do every day. And we'll go through the aging process out there. They have a lot of activities that are very constructive and also recreational type things. I also want to do some partnerships with uh, uh, other areas. I like to use our school system. Schools are a very valuable tool that we can use not only for our education, but also for recreation. They have a lot of property. They have a lot of money at times that they can use through grants and so forth to help our community. So I definitely want us to partner up with them. I also can foresee a partnership with Murray County Parks and use some of their resources to come down. This is part of Murray County, folks. Everybody lives in Mount Pleasant, lives in Murray County, so let's use them too. And, you know, finally, I would like us just to really work together. And as county mayor, I had worked on a project that's been working on down here for a while uh, to get Arrow Lake and some of that good property out there incorporated into walking trails and putting that lake back into a situation where we can use it. I want to continue to push for that. It'd be a great recreation tool for the city of Mount Pleasant. Thank you. Thank you. And in following with what uh, Vice Mayor Bailey said, having been a part of that committee that did the funding and the grant writing with the Parks and Recreation, I think the most important thing is making sure that we continue to fund that grant. It's a three-year grant, but it has to continue to be funded. And one of the reasons is it's a number one priority. We had a town hall meeting recently, a couple months ago, and the number one priority in that meeting from the citizens who attended was to have parks and recreation for our community members, uh, young, old, older, uh, elderly, and everyone to be a part of it. I don't know if you're aware of that. We have six parks in our community. The community center, at one time, there was a move to get this facility closed because it was costly. Well, in the past uh, months with Mr. Kenny here, he's managed to reduce the utility bill by having somebody here watching that and maintaining it, but increase the usage of it. And for that, he's, he's it truly, uh, Thomas falling into our laps with, the, with uh, him coming here and us being able to hire him. And we want to see that that's funded because when we look and we look at research done, anybody that's looking for a community, be it a business, an industry, or residents moving here. They're looking to see not only what their schools are doing, but what kind of businesses you have here, resources, and what kind of re recreation do you have available. And uh, like Jim said too, with the, the Arrow Lake and that, but we have walk, a walking trail here. We have parks and that, we have things that, and we, what we need is to make sure that our leaders here that you elect have that as a priority because that's what you as citizens have said is a priority for you. Thank you. I think one of the first things we need to do is communication with the citizens, especially those who have children in school. 
I've talked with Thomas Kennedy, Kenny, excuse me, about his new department, and it's something to benefit kids of all ages. It's a chance for kids to get together and set down their cell phones and participate in activities that are offered. Mr. Kenny has started programs for the youth. He has already got the golf, <clears throat> this golf course started thanks to funds from the Arrow Lake Foundation. He's got basketball goals, ping pong tables, and other sports equipment already here in the community center. And this is just a start for something good for the kids in Mount Pleasant. There is no limit to the, act <clears throat> the activities that this program can offer. And I encourage all citizens to, <clears throat> to think of new activities and present them to Mr. Kennedy for consideration. As people participate, it will grow and our children will have, have a place that is a good, clean, safe environment. Also, I feel if kids are having fun, It'll grow. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wish to thank the previous gentleman for stealing my thunder. <laughs> the only way I can say to improve the parts of recreation is to clone Thomas. The time I spent with him, almost three hours, was eye opening. And we can't really improve on something that's two, three months old. I'm going to run down a list here. If you have questions later, I hope uh, you can go through bullet points like that here. The one thing the success hinges on the programs is not Thomas. It's your people, your neighbors, your friends. If the city residents do not support the program, it will fail, not Thomas's. Additional events for middle-aged seniors, even so weekends when uh, we do the work. A softball team, so I grew up in a town of 1700. We had baseball games every weekend. Softball games, slow pitch, fast pitch, you pick your choice. I think uh, some more soccer teams, baseball teams, we, those ballparks I think should be occupied all summer long. Not just, I don't know what they are. More community events, cookouts. Memorial Day, the place is dead. Fourth of July, we're dead. Labor Day, we're dead. I do not like going up to Mary County to their park. Can't park, can't barbecue, and you can't see the fireworks. But again, citizens have to support this. Publication also. Communication must be improved between the citizens and the city, and the city and the communication. Communication is indeed a two-way street. Most importantly, a lot of people talk to me, they need summer programs. Keep the kids off the street. More than that, you have to beat the boredom. The kids get in trouble from boredom. Thomas has already told me he's working on that. Right, Thomas? Good man. I don't know what he's not working on. He's doing it. Thank you. Thank you. together a number of years and, and he knows I'm try to be a little analytical and I took some time to go back and look at the communities within our trade area I'll call it within our circle and I looked at the budgets that they have in those communities for parks and recreations the city of Franklin today contributes seven percent of their total annual budget to parks and recreations it's successful for some reason city of Spring Hill as well 7% of their annual budget goes to parks and recreations. I think it tells a lot, or should tell us a lot, why those communities are so successful. I can tell you from a first-hand experience, when any type of businesses are looking at a community to relocate, they look at two things and they look at them very fast. They look at schools and they look at parks and recreation. It's the quality of life, what can we offer? I think we've done a great job in hiring new parks and recreation, and thank you for what you're doing, Mr. Kenny, and everything I'm hearing is wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> we have William Springs over here where we're currently having some events. The car show I know annually is a huge event and raises a great deal of money for us locally. Uh, but should we not look at expanding that? 
Now with that, I understand that takes a lot of volunteers. That's all volunteer work for the most part. But that's what builds great communities, are the people within that community driving and move, trying to move us forward so that the children and that the other folks have places to walk, places to go enjoy themselves and to meet other peoples in the community. Thank you. I think one of, one of the most important things that's in any town is the parks recreation. And I'm very happy that you got Mr. McKinney on a three year plan, I guess it is, but I would like to see it made into a full time position into the future. But the most important thing is to develop a strategy and a plan to go forward with parks and recreation. You know, I know Columbia has got a brand new park over here. Why can't we have that? Why is Mount Pleasant can't have a buy land and build a new park? Why can't we give these kids, not only kids, seniors, adults, we need to plan the whole spectrum. The kids get in trouble because they have nothing to do. And we need to, whether it's intramural sports, whether we've got to start planning those type of operations for the kids. And I fully support the parks band, and I think we've got to support it. Everyone takes it's a group effort, but, and the key is everyone has to support them, all the citizens of Mount Pleasant, as best you can. You may not have to be there, but you can not, you know, just do what you can. Thank you. All right, just so uh, I may have not been very clear, but we'll start the second question with you, Mr. Williams, and we will go down the table this way. And, you know, we've got to do things that encourage business from the smallest to the biggest. And by parks recreation, we've got to take care of our sewer problem. That's one of our greatest problems we have. Thank you. I, I like looking at this in a couple of manners. Number one is small business within our community. Uh, there's a, a survey done by the American Independent Business Alliance that says that every $100 that you spend in a big box store, only $13 of that money comes back to your community. For every $100 you spend in a small business locally, $45 of that money stays right here. One of the things that I think we have got to make sure that we do is have some type of incentives for small businesses within our community, whether it be a roadmap to reducing the headaches of trying to get certain types of zoning done or certain types of businesses that we need here to make sure that we're not overly restrictive for the small businesses that want to locate here. Secondly, I want to talk about our industrial. It's important. What we've got out here with UST is going to be phenomenal. The money that that's going to bring our community, both in the gas sales and the electricity sales, is going to be great for our tax base, and let's not lose sight of that. It also helps if we can do that for the rooftops that we're going to be able to build here once we get beyond our moratorium, that helps create even more tax dollars that will be right here in our community. We've got a great asset city just right across from us out here, and that's Cherry Glen. We did, and we had to do this, work very closely with the Murray County Industrial Development Board. The fact is, that is their property, but the fact is, it is sitting in the city of Mount Pleasant. And we've got to focus on that and to continue again to make sure that we're not setting up roadblocks for people to relocate here. Thank you. Thank you. Can I buy another minute? Okay, the one thing that stuck out to me, I went to the Alliance webpage, Mary County is the fifth in the, in the state for economic investment. Think about that. Last year we were number three. Uh, I think maybe the building permits may have hurt there. Think about that. We need to use all our resources available to assist current businesses and attract new businesses. We have resources in house. Uh, also, Mary Alliance will, Alliance will help us with that as well. 
And I found a new uh, asset today called the Rural Business Enterprise Grant. Um, it's done through a program in Nebraska, of all places. Now, they can't come to us and help us point out anything, but all of their correspondence, written programs, they will be more than glad to help us with anything. A lot of that will be federal grant, grants, federal funds, and things like that. But I talked to the gentleman in charge of the program today. Anything they can do to help us, they are on board. Um, that one grant I, I spoke about uh, is called, it will provide grants for real projects that finance and facilitate development of small and emerging rural businesses, help fund business incubators, and help fund employment uh, related adult education. Let that sink in a moment. Long term plans. We do not have any kind of plan for what's going to happen tomorrow, much less 5, 10, or 20 years from now. We need to sit down and project where we're going to be going. We have to take a hard look at where we are, much more like you do at home. There'll be in finances and infrastructure and where we're going to go and anticipate possible family uh, population growth. Beautification programs. When people drive down into Mount Pleasant, think about it next time you do, what do they see? And we have to have beautification programs, aggressive anti-drug and possibly anti-gang activity. Thank you. Thank you. Mount Pleasant, ooh, Mount Pleasant has two things that are very attractive to business and plants like UST. First of all, we're a rural town. We've got plenty of area, plenty of room to grow as a city. We've got uh, Cherry Glen. We're not near any big city. Because when folks you get to large cities, the worse the restrictions are. Also, we've got the railroad. <clears throat> this having access to the road, the railroad, excuse me, for plants that will need large volume of raw materials and supplies to operate. We've got that here. As we start to grow, there will be a demand for housing and utilities to support them, the new business that will follow growth. This is why it is important to get the moratorium lifted and start working on the infrastructure. As, we, as new business comes, Mount Pleasant will need to encourage them to hire locally local people. We need to patronize and support local business and keep the dollar at home. If I'm elected, I will do my best to support Mount Pleasant and help it pro uh, prosper and grow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the city manager and the employers under employees under the direction of the city commissioner for the past several years had a major focus in, on this, improving our city's infrastructure. And as we continue to work to improve, our, improve this, our strategic planning becomes more and more focused as the area of the needs are more focused. The most needful projects of water and sewer treatment have been addressed, and although they're ongoing, the major repairs have been addressed. Now we need to look at the strategic planning at the, at the smaller things that need, such as Reduction, the reduction of deaths, but unfortunately sidewalks, drainage, and roads still need attention. That's what people see when they come into our town. And the industry is going to continue to come. The businesses are con continuing to come. But when you can't walk down the sidewalks, you can't drive down the roads, and your drainage is a problem, and you have a moratorium, you've got to address those. So the commissioners, while not directly overseeing these projects, do need to support a budget which funds these projects and makes sure that the monies, the grants, and the per person supervising these jobs do so appropriately. This requires some time on the parts of commissioners to ask questions, keep informed about what's going on on each and every project regarding our city's infrastructure, and making sure that accurate information is shared with our citizens. Part of our problem has been inaccurate information now. We need to make sure as commissioners that we have accurate information given out about our projects. Who we hire, 
who oversees them, and what's done in keeping ourselves in, in, in form. That way, the businesses now in Mount Pleasant and those looking forward to coming to our city will have an attractive, safe community, and we will have an informed population and citizens. Thank you. Thank you. retail business. I was fortunate to run a retail business in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee for 29 years. It was a drugstore. Had a Walgreens agency there at one time. and It's a great uh, privilege to have a successful business and back then it was much easier than it is today to do that. Mount Pleasant faces the challenges that all small towns face with a large town like Columbia next to it with big boxes like Walmart and so forth. You can compete with them but you have to think out of the box in order to do that. The best way that we can help do that is when these businesses are come, and they are going to come here, is we try to support them and try to encourage them and make it easy from the city standpoint for them to locate here. Uh, as Mr. White said, retail business is entirely different from industrial recruiting. They count rooftops and they figure for every rooftop there's two and a half people living in that household. And actually, we have had to commission aerial photographs for Murray County in order to try to sell our county to these people who want to come to big box top companies. Uh, it, it's, it's an industrial recruiting is much easier too to do that with and they will let you look at your labor force which you can go into other counties and count, and count them as part of your own people within a 50 mile radius. So of all the things that I enjoyed in my 12 years as county mayor which ended in 2014, and I thought I was retiring forever. Uh, <laughs> industrial recruiting was the thing that I enjoyed the most. It was my privilege to be a part of the UST coming to Murray County and particularly to Mount Pleasant. It wasn't easy. He said, oh, you just go knock on doors, they'll come. That ain't the way it works, folks. It took three years to get that plan in here. We lost it at least two or three different times and got it back. And it's gonna be, it, it is going to be a great thing for Mount Pleasant. We're fortunate. We got the jobs that the other people would love to have. Now we've got to get the houses, and we'll, I'm going to lose how to do that in my next segment on this. So let's all work together, and we, we're going to really prosper. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for this third question, before I read it, Mr. Stafford, if you would start us off, and then we'll go with Ms. Blankenship, Mr. Bailey, and then continue the table down this way. The third question is, what do you see as the most important issue facing the residents of Mount Pleasant? And what plan would you propose to address this issue? Well, there's... <laughs> well, there's a couple that I have, but the main one is the high utility rates. Everybody knows they are well, well too high. We're number three in the state. The little town, 4,800 people in Mount Pleasant, and we've got the third highest utility rates in the whole state. Now, I know as we get new businesses coming in and we start to grow small business, that uh, this will take care of itself eventually. But right now, we need to do everything we can and spend the people's money a little better and plan the way their money is used. And I don't have all the answers, but if I'm elected, I'll work with the other commissioners, no matter who they are, to solve issues like this, and also the sewer system, our inf infrastructure. That's the other one. Thank you. Thank you. I see the most important issue facing the residents of Mount Pleasant is twofold communication between local government and its citizens, and trust between these two. By government, I mean commissioners and citizens. While the city manager hires the employees of the city, the commissioners hire the city manager. This means we put our trust in this person that we hire. It is up to each of us as commissioner to develop a working relationship with our city manager, and up to the city manager to do the same. That does not mean that each and every decision needs to be run by each of us on a daily basis, but open lines of, commi of communication should be maintained on both sides. Gossip in a small town runs amok. 
Something overheard or casually commented on at McDonald's, the diner, or at church will spread like wildfire in a matter of minutes, given Facebook, Twitter, and loose lips. It is important that citizens feel free to ask questions of their local officials and city employees and get appropriate answers. It is also up to citizens both within and outside our city limits to take the time to check the validity of their information before sharing information that might be questionable. In my short time as a city commissioner, I have found that gossip and more poor information causes more problems than anything else in our city. I can't tell you the number of times I've been stopped and asked, can you tell me about this? And I'll say, yeah, what do you want to know? And solve that person's problem by just giving them some information or telling them where to go find it. We are blessed right now with having some open lines of communication. As I see and hear the pe these people that I've met, just met, that's what they're doing. Um, and I'll give you the stat on the other thing. Swanee, Tennessee, is the second highest with a, of, a, of a sewage rates and there's where I'll go tomorrow. So it's interesting. So I urge you, and as a city commissioner, I promise to help to keep those lines of communication open and to be honest and upfront. Thank you. I think there are four main areas that we're going to have to address in Mount Pleasant. Number one is the sewer issue. It's got to be solved, folks. It's strangling this town to death. Uh, it's keeping us from growing. If we're going to grow our retail, we're going to have to in get this sewer thing stopped. I'm very pleased with the present commission of what I've seen. They've adopted the Barge Wagner plan that will take us out of this thing within a two-year period. I'm, I'm, I'm just really elated about that because that's stopping so many good things from happening here. Number two, what the present commission has done, and I applaud the present commissioners for the work, Mayor Shackford and Commissioner Davis, for what you've done in approving these things. And this refinance plan that we approved the other night in order to apply for a grant that will lower our interest rate and, and spread out our payments over a greater time, giving us an opportunity to bank some money, plus the, pay, the privilege to repay this loan without penalty when we come into better times. Number three, I want to see us adopt a five-year capital plan on our infrastructure. Our streets are a disgrace. Uh, my subdivision I live in, and I'm not throwing criticism to anybody who hadn't had the money to fix it. I know that's the reason we patched it. But there's 24 breaks in the two streets in the subdivision I live on. And they, mine has been patched three or four times. And we, we need to get a plan to do that. We can't fix it all in one year, but I think we can fix it on a five-year period. We'll start planning toward that. We'll get the sewer behind us and give us more money to do that. Number four, I want us to continue to have good, strong department heads. That, that is a key to good government on a day-to-day -day basis, a strong city manager with strong department heads who can answer the, to the people. And you have a problem, you go down and you tell them what it is, and the department heads look. So I think we can take care of that. I know we can't do it right now, but we're going to get it. So let's all work together. Again, it's a spirit of cooperation, the citizens, and the Mission together, working for the better of Mount Pleasant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Oh, Mr. Williams, would you? Uh, yes, would you go next? Thank you. I uh, like Mr. Bailey, Mrs. Blankenship. I do believe that the most important and distressing thing that the city of Mount Pleasant has to deal with and deal with now is our sewer system, and that, that the last commissioners meeting and I was really impressed Kate and them they uh, had federal grants and the other deal that Mr. Bailey talked about seemed like they were finally addressing and moving forward in our you know city and taking care of the sewer system you know parks recreation these are things but uh, I also I think sidewalk streets you know, there's just so many things that when you go into a city, when you see uh, clean streets, paved streets, nice sidewalks, it just makes you feel better about that city. And I think that's what we've got to strive for, you know, between our parks and recreation to, you know, infrastructure to businesses. You know, we've got to work and plan and have good leadership. And most of all is the commissioners who you elect have got to have the ability to work with each other and get something done instead of arguing and fighting. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the, but the number one issue I see in our community is a moratorium on the sewer. Right now in the city of Mount Pleasant, all we can do is build seven homes. We can't sustain ourselves like that. We can't grow a tax base unless we can get that behind us. It appeared to me, and, and I'm glad to hear and I've kept up with it closely, that it appears that we're finally moving forward with that. We appear to keep looking back too long, and if you look back too long, you can't move forward. So the great news is, is that there appears to be a fix. Now, it is going to be a substantial cost. Don't anybody think there's not going to be, but as has been mentioned, there is an opportunity to refi some existing debt and with <clears throat> understanding some of the loan programs that are out there myself, you can get this money in the one, one and a half percent range, which is going to be very beneficial to us because we have got to continue to grow our tax base. Without homes, we're not going to be able to grow a tax base to alleviate this enormous rate that we are paying today for our sewer and water. It's just not going to happen without increasing our tax base. And how do we do that? We get ourselves out of the moratorium. It makes our city much more attractive to prospective industrial employees as well as retail. They're not going to come if we can't provide them the water and the sewer and the power and the gas that they need to be able to supply their business. Um, again, I think we're moving in the right direction with that. I am pleased to know that we are, but again, I, I am very open about this. It's going to be a substantial cost, but the good news is over a period of time, it will save us a considerable amount of money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for stealing my thunder. Again, again, broken record. I think it's on all our minds that moratorium needs to be lifted. We need to do everything I can. The city manager has found a way we may get it lifted sooner. Bless you. The most important thing we can do is get that taken out. Secondly, community involvement. The residents, the citizens of the town have got to learn what is actually going on. I've approached the city manager for a few things we can do for improved communi communication, and we have to have that. We would not succeed without the community helping implement some of these programs. As I'm looking at like a uh, FAQ on our website, maybe some uh, broad board band, uh, posts throughout the town where you can go out and post the information. People can go read it. Um, we got to keep the Mount Pleasant dollars in here. I think someone said it earlier. A dollar spent in Columbia doesn't help us much at all. So we have to get that, uh, all the facilities work up and going. The more businesses open in here, the better I save on mileage on my car. Uh, the broken window theory, I'm not, uh, New York Mayor Giuliani, Giuliani yes, him. Uh, now what that is, this is a, a metaphor for disorder within neighborhoods. The theory links disorder and instability within the community, the subsequent occurrence of senior crises. The broken window theory, in your neighbor's window, park uh, this band in cars. We've got to clean the town up, so if someone drives through here, the water rates won't matter. Um, attractive interest, as I mentioned that before, you need to clean up the uh, roadway leading into town. We got to in also improve our vehicles, particularly uh, on the streets out there. Steve would love that. Some of them ready to fall apart. That could be included in our long range plans. I'm sitting down. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, well, we're getting to the end of it here. So um, you have each have one minute for closing, and uh, we'll start with you, Mr. Bailey, and work our way down. Thank you. One minute is pretty short time, even though I talk pretty fast. I think that, and I'm, I have the knowledge, and I have the experience, and I, most of all, I have the, the desire to serve Mount Pleasant. Knowledge you can get by reading and studying and listening, uh, experience you get by doing, but you've got to have the desire on the front end. You won't get it when you get on the commission, I'll guarantee you that, because there's a lot of hard hocks to go. But I think my mission statement will be that, uh, as 
member of the Mount Pleasant City Commission that I work very hard to improve on our weaknesses and that I will work very hard to promote our strengths while maintaining a affordable budget for all the citizens of Mount Pleasant and I respectfully ask for your vote and support in this election. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. I mean, it is a brief time to speak. Um, and in closing, I hope to, each of you, judge me on my reputation and what I've done in the community and the past years I've served on the, the committee the two, um, as a commissioner for two years. If you have any questions you'd like to ask me, please feel free to. Um, a lot of rumors abound. A lot of things have been published. Um, if you've got a question about anything that personally affects me, please feel free to do that. And I appreciate your vote and look forward to having this done and having a new commission to work with and wish Mount Pleasant the best. Whether win or lose, I still will be in there as a volunteer. There's a near and dear thing to my heart is living in Mount Pleasant. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in closing, I got one thing I want to clear the air about. When I was getting my petition signed to, get, to be able to run, I had four people ask me, whose side are you on? That's right. Two of them were joking. The other two were serious. They wouldn't even sign my petition. This has got to stop. The people have got to start working together. I know from experience from being in the military, if you've got a weak link, you're in trouble. And right now, our government has been broken for a while. And we need to get along and start working together for all people. And I don't make promises very often in my lifetime, but I'm gonna make you one right now. Any decision that I make or any vote I cast will be for all of you, everybody, everybody. Not one in particular, but for everyone that votes, every citizen in this city. Because the commissioner's job is one that the, you're, getting, you're getting hired by the people directly. Sorry, you're not Mr. getting hired by one person. Thank you. Thank you. I think everybody in this room understands the definition of the word stewardship. We don't own this city, we are stewards of the city, and therefore we're stewards of our citizens. We would, I will act on that. I will adhere to my fiduciary responsibilities as well. The only thing I can tell you is I, I am prepared. I was on a board of directors of the historical society. They wanted to buy at the train depot, the motion boats, when it got to me, it was tied. I had done my, uh, my research on a, a return on an investment, which was zero. I voted against it, because it was not good for the historical society. I lost two or three friends that day, but I saved the historical society. That attitude that will bring to the commission, if it's not good for the city, it's like I told one man, he said, what can you do for me? I said, nothing. But the city has to do something good for and that will flow to you. If you have a situation, though, individually, give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to come tonight. It's important that I think we do that. Uh, one of the things that I've thought about a lot is I know that each of us in this room has a significant investment in this community. I know our family has over a great number of years, and we can't overlook that. It's time for us to work together, create some civility in what we have going on in our commission, in our community. What we have going now in fighting groups on one side, groups on another, is clearly not very well working. Let's don't keep looking back. Let's look forward at what we can all do to make this community a better place. I'm not a politician. I've been known to say I'll run from it, not for it but I'm doing this because I think it's in the best interest of everybody here. And thank you very much, and I would surely appreciate your support and vote on November the 8th.
as you can tell, I'm not very polished, and about, compared to a lot of these gentlemen, not very prepared, you know. Only thing I can promise you are these things. I'm an honest man, I have integrity, I'll do what I say. If I don't know it, I'll learn. I'll work hard for the people and to make my pleasant move forward, not back, we'll always keep looking forward, not in the past. If you vote for me, I would appreciate it. And most important thing, vote. Whether whoever you vote, just vote. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, first, we'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight. Uh, I hope that you found this informative. We tried not to take up your whole night. Uh, second, we'd like to thank all of the candidates for coming. Uh, wish you the best of luck in your race for commission. And we'd also like to thank uh, our local and county elected officials that have shown up, our fire department, police department for helping, uh, the city of Mount Pleasant, Mr. Donald Paul and WXRQ, and even my mom came tonight. So. All right, everyone, I, I uh, hope that you have a great night. And